Thank you. It's good to be here. I started my uh, career in the world of child welfare as a, a child psychologist. My job was to interview children in order to um, represent them in court in order to, to, to prosecute their parents, to put them in jail. And so I would interview children, I'd interview parents, and, and I would do these psychological assessments, write 30-page reports, and then go before court and, and testify why these parents should be prosecuted for their, their, uh, what they did to their children. And so um, I, I just, as I was been doing that, I remember this one little girl that actually changed my life. She was five years old. I, was, I worked at this hospital, Mount Sinai. They said, go interview this girl and gather information. So I interviewed her. I, I approached her. She was crying. Her face, she looked at me, and her face was, was all bruised. And she, she told me her story about why, what happened, that her mom's boyfriend did this to her and, and, and things like that. And... And, um, and so I was then to go and talk to the court about what happened to her. And so, and so I went and met with this mom of the girl, and, and she talked about how her boyfriend did this. And I was like, well, why would you stay with him? And she had no options. And then I, I realized that God made these little bodies in incredible ways that they'll recover from these injuries in most situations. But the thing that won't recover are their spirits. And so I thought, well, what can, you know, so I thought, well, why, why don't we intervene before these bad things happen to kids? And why don't we move upstream and begin? We know these families are in trouble. Why don't we try and help them before these bad things happen to kids? And so I started being um, convicted by this idea of, of uh, prevention. And, and I thought the church is really best equipped to do this. And a couple reasons why I think it's best equipped is that the church has the largest redistribution system. Right? Not distribution system, redistribution system. We're all given grace and forgiveness and love, and we're to redistribute that. And we have churches on every corner. The church has the best product to address this issue. Parents abuse their kids most likely in most situations because of they lack relatives and caring people to help them out. And so they're socially isolated. The church is best equipped to address that issue. Call it love, compassion, forgiveness. I call it resurrecting hospitality. The third reason is that we have the best price, right? We offer this for free. You might think free means not at a cost, but in my mind, free means with no expectation. That, that we're to serve not because a parent's going to get better. You know, this idea of we're to love our neighbors, I, I get that. Love our enemies, I don't get that. <laughs> That means keep loving your enemy even if they continue to be your enemy and they don't become your friends. And so, so we have the right price free. No expectations. We do it despite whether people get better or not. And the state can't do this. Really, they can't do it because they have laws that require them to wait till kids are abused before they're willing to help. They have funding that pays them for taking kids away, not preventing from taking kids away. They have a PR problem because a, a mob's not going to go to the state and say, these are all my problems. Can you help me? Because they also can take away your kids. So there's a PR problem. So the church is best equipped. But we have, if we're to move in this direction, we have to do something differently, I believe. We have to do something. We have to approach this differently. We have to address barriers differently. And I call these the, the four R's, and I'll end with this. One thing that we have to do is we have to re resurrect ancient hospitality. When I say hospitality, you think of Martha Stewart, Cookies and Cake, House and Garden Magazine, things like that. I don't know if you know, but hospitality was a key strategy for the spread of the church during the first five centuries. It means love of strangers, and it's done in our home. I always wonder, why are pastors to be hospitable? Why are elders to be hospitable? It's because that's a key strategy that needs to be consistent within our church. The second thing I think we have to do is we have to repurpose our families. Repurpose our families. I grew up in a Christian family. I was taught, my family was taught, that we're to defend our family, protect our family, guard our family. Um, safety was paramount. We wanted our homes to be safe homes. That was the most important thing providing safety for our kids. And I wondered, is that, should that be the priority of our families? Is safety the most important thing? Do we 
create safety ourselves, or is that God's job for us is to create a safe environment? Our job is to obey him, and the safest place is being obedient to what he wants us to do. And so instead of our families being the safe, protective things, our families are meant to be unleashed to change our world, to invite needs into our families and serve, and serve in that way. So it's either choosing safety or service and unleashing our families. The third thing is we need to rethink ownership. Rethink ownership. When I started Safe Families, the head of DCFS said, Dave, it'll never work. I was like, why won't it work? It's because children aren't valuable in our society unless someone owns them. People will do anything for their own children. People will do anything to adopt children. But there is no one else looking out for or caring for someone else's children without the opportunity to own them. It'll never, ever work. And that's an opportunity we have. We have to rethink the idea of do we love kids only if we have the opportunity to own them, or do we love kids without ownership? And the last thing is we need to remarket the need. I'm a foster parent. I recruited foster parents. We often raise foster parents. We talk about them. We recruit by them. We need you to save the children. We often don't finish the sentence, save the children from what? Well, obviously bad parents, right? And so we recruit this idea that these parents are bad, we need to save them, but most aren't. Commission, I'm going to close it. Commissioner B.J. Walker said, to this, said, me, said this to us. She said, if we truly love the kids, we will love their parents. Why? Because the kids want that the most. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs>